Well, the birds are out today. We got some blue jays in the background. We got a bunch of robins. Love it. Today we are just going to go over this bow sling. Uh, so it's just a paracord bow sling, um, and the, I made a matching wrist sling. And uh, this thing is going to be kind of cool. I've got a shoot, an archery shoot that I'm going to be going to later on this summer, hopefully, called the R100. It's the Reinhardt 100, and I just thought I wanted something to make it easier to carry the bow. I have another sling, I think, a Primo sling, and it covers the strings and stuff, but I don't want to be buttoning and unbuttoning to carry that thing around, so I made this thing. So I'm going to walk through all the steps it took to do that, as, long, as well as the wrist sling a little bit. Uh, there's tons of videos out there on this, so... If you're watching mine, thanks. So I saw somebody else uh, did a review on a sling that had like a magnet system on theirs um, to kind of lock it in. And I like that so that way it's not flopping all around. So I ended up kind of just bolting a magnet here. And then I put another magnet here and a paracord wrapped that in as well as some electrical tape. So that thing just lays flat right onto there. Real quiet. Keeps that sling right next to the the bow, um, as you see, kind of holds it there, um, and it's it's kind of cool, kind of keeps it out of the way. So super excited. Stay tuned. Oh, hey, did you know what? Today, whose hat are we repping? Michigan Great Outdoors. Great channel, fellow Michigander. Shout out to him. So stick around. Alright, so I lost all my footage of making the original bow sling, so we're going to start over. Unfortunately, I don't have any more black paracords, I'm going to be using camouflage and yellow just to kind of show you the process. So a couple things, to do the bow sling end of it, I'm just going to use a simple length of paracord folded in half going down the center. However, if you're doing a wrist sling or some other type of braiding, you could use four pieces and do a four piece weave or you could even do three pieces and do a typical braid and that can be your center core. But for this instance, <clears throat> like I said, I'm going to be using just two for the way I want to do this one. So what you do is just take a simple length, fold it in half. For mine, for my bow sling, I made mine 40 inches long um, from the loop end to where I tied my knot. Um, and then I ended up making it shorter than that, but I'd rather have a little extra. So at the end, I just simply tied a knot so that I kind of knew where <clears throat> I was stopping. So from the knot to the end of the loop was 40 inches. And then I began my braid. I should say this, um, take that back. I had a small knot at the top as well, just like that. Just a simple knot at the top and knot at the bottom and the space between the knots was 40 inches. So I began tying our cobra knot, cobra weave, whatever, cobra knot, right here at this knot and went all the way to, the, to there. <clears throat> the second thing you're going to need is you're going to need paracord and you can use the same color but I think it's a little cooler if you don't, if you use two different colors. So for this example, we're going to be using a yellow and a camouflage. And what you're going to want is for the length of your sling, you're going to want about five feet of each of these for the sling. So if you wanted a three foot sling, you're going to want 15 feet of rope, um, 15 feet of each color. So for this, I'm just going to do about five feet of each one of these <clears throat> just because I'm just showing you an example. So what we're going to do to start this thing off is we're going to melt these two ends and then basically join them together. Take these two pieces and shove them together. And on here we're just going to use the knife to kind of press those firmly together. And that gives us a nice place to start here. This to our table. Makes it a whole lot easier. All right. 
<coughs> so we're gonna start off. It's gonna be a little tough because I've got the camera right in front of my face here. But what I want to do is I'm for me, this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna start my cobra weave just above this knot to keep that whole weave from sliding down. Now I'm gonna pick the yellow cord and I'm gonna bring it over like this, and then this camouflage cord is going to go under it, underneath our base core, and then back through here. So again, bring it across, put it, put this one through here, bring it back through, and then pull all the way through, and that's our knot. And what we're going to do is we're going to put that up here, and I'm going to tighten it so that that part that we melted together is right on center. <clears throat> now we're always leading with that camouflage end. So again we'll bring it back over, camouflage through, underneath our core, and through. And as we're doing that we're going to make sure that our core stays nice and flat. These two get separated out. And pull in tight. And again, leading with the yellow, bring it across, under, through, through, under, through. Pulling it tight. Again, make sure this your base layer stays <coughs> flat. Another thing, uh, especially when you're first starting off, if you don't like, if you're using the same color paracord, you need to keep track of which one you're leading with, because if you don't, this thing will just be a twisted mess the entire way down. That's why it, it's cool to use two different colors. It makes it a whole lot easier. Um, but you can do it with the same color. I, I feel like that just makes it easier. So again, bringing it over, camouflage under, underneath our core, pull through. And make sure you're just snugging your knots up. And again, this gets, once you get it down, it gets much faster. And what's cool about it is it, it looks this way on one side and the other side's the exact opposite. So depending on which way you kind of want it to face, you know, whether you got the yellow in the center or the camouflage in the center, uh, one side does the other. So, all right, so what we're going to do, depending on where you want to loop this through, I've seen some people go through the limbs. Not really a fan of having anything touch in my limbs. I don't know that it will really affect the performance, but in my head it might, so I'm not going to. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through here. So we're going to loop it through and then bring it right back through itself here. And then loop a second time. And then we're going to bring our entire sling through that and make sure this is on for me I want it on my sight side this part of the, the knot here I want it on my sight side and then I'm going to come down to the bottom here This one, this is where we have this. Let's see, get confused with that. 
So this is the one where we have this loop. So we're going to do the same type of thing. We're going to go through here, come through the center again, and then what we're going to do is we're going to come. Sorry, we're a little twisted. Here. Okay, we're going to come through our loop and then around. We're going to pull our diamond knot through that loop and then snug this whole thing up. Well, thanks for sticking around. Hopefully you've got something out of this video. And if you did, please consider subscribing. And I think for that, you can probably push a button right up over here. And uh, if you want to see some other DIY videos, you can probably push something right up over there. As always, thanks for sticking around. Please like, share, subscribe, comment down below. We're out of here.